Welcome to Sky Sweaty Record Review, episode 35, 36, who cares? It's the only online new music show hosted by a French professor immediately after getting off the elliptical. Today's episode is an episode of Destiny. And why is that? Because of this. Last night, I went to go work out. I do elliptical one day and I do weights the other. And I lifted some weights and I wicked pulled my latissimus dorsi over Thanksgiving. Uh, I was playing like horsey with my daughter. And so like I lifted weights and it hurt. So I went to the elliptical and I did kind of like a half-hearted elliptical workout. And I listened to a new album and I came back and I did a video and it was dark and it was under four minutes and it just wasn't a very good video at all. But I ended it with this statement. This was the British Missy Elliott, but a little bit boring. That was my thesis about the first artist I, I'm going to review today. And I, I made the video and I didn't upload it. It just wasn't good enough. So this morning I was going back to the gym to do my real workout and I thought if only there was like another short album that was kind of Missy Elliott inspired as well. And that way I could compare them both together and talk about my love of Missy Elliott and her influence and kind of pontificate on that. But what are the odds that there are gonna be two separate Missy Elliott inspired artists coming out with albums in the same week? It turns out the odds are 100% because that's exactly what happened. I was scrolling through and I found this other artist who not only sounded like Missy Elliott on the first track, but the fifth track of the album is named what? I'll let you guess. It's named Missy Elliott. So, here I was. I got to finally talk about Missy Elliott and compare these two albums. One by Peanut with Carnes Hill, and the other by um, Pink Caravan, which is stylized underscore, no space, exclamation point. So, Pink Caravan! I want to talk about Missy Elliott to start off with. I'm obsessed with the idea of musicians who start revolutions and then who follows them. Because there's no point in starting a revolution if no one follows you. I remember back in 1997, I used to listen to hip hop radio all the time. And if there was ever like an R&B song, I would just skip it, which was like half the time back in 97. And there was this one song that kept on playing, Supa Dupa Fly, The Rain by Missy Elliott. And I didn't like it because it was too much singing and I had kind of a prejudice against female voices. But the more I listened to it, the more I kind of liked it. And the more I sort of liked the production to the point where I would actually wait for it to come on. And then all I wanted to hear was that. And I bought the album and I thought, this is great. It's a little too much hip hop. I mean, it's a little bit too much R&B. It's not quite enough hip hop, but I don't know. And in the end, I ended up loving it and buying the next CD as well. So what is it that makes Missy Elliott so revolutionary? Well, when she came out, I would say there's a couple reasons. One is that she's a true artist who works with a true artist. So Missy Elliott, when she started, worked only with Timbaland. They came out of the Virginia Beach area and that was what they did. They worked together, they were a pair. They would write songs for other people and they wrote songs for themselves. This meant that they weren't a part of this whole production line of hip hop producers and singers. They weren't performers, they were artists. Missy Elliott was an artist, a true hip hop and R&B artist. That's the other way that she revolutionized music, was she didn't care if she rapped and then sang. It didn't matter, she could do it all, and she could write it all for herself. And what was she writing? Well, it wasn't the hyper-sexualized hip hop, uh, female hip hop that you'd seen with artists like uh, Lil' Kim or Foxy Brown, and it, uh, nor was it the sort of hyper-aggressive stuff of Eve or other rappers. It was sort of just about being herself, and herself is somebody who's kind of weird. So it's essentially just somebody rapping about their life, singing about their life, and having it be a little bit strange, mixed with a producer, Timbaland, who is changing the landscape of pop music and hip-hop for the next, I don't know, I'll tell you when it's over, at least the next 30 years. This mixture of idiosyncratic, fascinating beats mixed with idiosyncratic hip-hop, rhyming, singing, dominated pop culture. But what did it actually do for female artists in the future? Well, obviously, if you listen to Nicki Minaj or any, basically any female rapper since, you see it. But what I ended up discovering is that this week, there's two albums that come out that directly show this influence. I'll start with the one that I listened to last night on my half workout because of my latissimus dorsi. That's called 
the album is called Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, which is actually why I decided to listen to it. Because I thought, that's a funny name for an album. And that's why that's back there. Um, and it's this rapper, Peanut. And by the way, good luck looking up Peanut to find any information about her. Uh, if you look up Peanut Rapper, you find some like dude in Atlanta. I don't know anything about her. I don't know anything about her producer, Carnes Hill. A complete mystery. But this is an EP. It's about 30 minutes. And it's almost excellent. At times, it's excellent. Uh, I think if you take... Um, I mean, it's very British, okay? So she raps with a British accent, so that's nice. Um, sometimes with a West Indian accent. And it's this interesting production that is very consistent. I'll use as an example uh, a track called Heartless, which gets the Sky stamp on this album. So I would listen to that track, Heartless, to see what I'm talking about. And on that track, there's an interesting sample. I, uh, I believe it is from Bach, the Jig Partita number one. And that jig by Bach that you know, 17th, 18th century jig from Bach is then matched with kind of typical trap hip hop production. You know, the hi-hat and a booming bass. And that's the template for the entire album. If that sounds interesting to you, a kind of boring hi-hat and bass with at least one interesting element on top of it, then I think you might like the production done by Carnes Hill because he produces the entire album or she, I don't know. The rapping itself is okay. It's kind of funny because she talks a lot about fannies, which makes me laugh. Um, the thematics are basically about like growing up hard scrabble, having nothing, hoping to have money but not being dominated by money. Um, the singing is pretty good. Uh, another good track, I would say, the second track to listen to off this one is a song called Came From Nothing. Um, <clears throat> it has this really intense like beep at times, like a very disruptive beep which I like that kind of aggressive production, unexpected production that reminded me a little bit of Timbaland. Uh, he also has like his like signature sound is the sample of someone talking about a second stage rocket taking off. I don't know. I, I don't know why he does that or she does that. So that was my review for Peanut, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. It's a good album. It's maybe gets a little bit repetitive, but really it's like I said, a British Missy Elliott. And then there is Pink Caravan. Pink Caravan, the album 2002, I assume referring to her birth year, I don't know what, is excellent. It's another EP. You can listen to both of these albums in the span of an hour and have a completely enjoyable experience reconnecting with some of that feeling that you had when listening to Missy Elliott. Much like Peanut and like Missy Elliott, she works with one producer, Namesake. He or she, I have no idea, produces the entire thing. I would say that his or her production is not quite as interesting as, uh, as it is with Peanut, but it's more enjoyable. I enjoyed Pink Caravan a lot. She has a lot of charisma. I think that's really what she has a lot of. Um, she doesn't really sing, but she has this nice kind of sleepy cadence uh, to her rapping. Uh, again, a kind of sleepy, strange flow. She's from St. Louis, so she makes multiple references to Nelly, who I've never liked that much, um, but that's kind of nice. She also references Left Eye and TLC. She makes all these references to past pop culture, in addition to the song Missy Elliott. But Missy Elliott is not the track to listen to. This album also gets two stamps. The opening track, Hot Wheels, with a Z, is excellent. It's just this... Perfect example of what makes this EP interesting. It makes me want to follow her more. Uh, it has a catchy chorus, but it's not a cheap catchy chorus. It's a sung chorus with kind of weird words that aren't easy to figure out. Ends with her saying like, I know the Muffin Man. I don't know what that means. And then the other track, and this is the best of all of the things I listen to, super stamp on this one. It's called Bomb Pop Man. So if you don't know, bomb pops are like things you get at an ice cream truck. So the producer, namesake takes the actual song that's played by ice cream trucks you know but kind of chops it up and matches it to the beat and then she has this i don't really know what she's rapping about i assume it's sexual i can't really tell um talking like 
about the bomb pop man and about like going to the ice cream truck and the whatever kind of weird metaphor it is. But it's a really catchy, engaging song. So that's what I would say. Both of these albums, I would just put these on your, on your playlist and just play them back to back. Just play Peanut, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, and Pink Caravan, 2002, back to back. They're great voices. They're doing interesting things. It's continuing this amazing tradition that was begun by Missy Elliott of female rappers and female artists allowed to be artists and not just performers, creators of a style, to be themselves, not to have to fulfill some kind of male ideal of what female uh, identity is. It's just great. I'm so happy this all worked out. All right, I'm gonna go ice my latissimus dorsi. Oh, and as far as the trivia question, uh, which I'm sure I will ask, um, let's say Seneca Park Zoo. Good place to go. All right. There's the camera.